Tomato paste. No. 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 All you need in order to make this tomato sauce is fresh tomatoes, olive oil, and salt. You know, the right way. whose life was changed by the tomato with onion and butter sauce from Marcella's Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking. This sauce taught me, to say the least, a lot about tomato sauce and what it really means and how important it is to do it correctly. Now, it really varies from region to region. This is partially why I'm a little nervous about doing this recipe because I know how Italians feel about their tomato sauce and I know that there are Italians watching this right now. Most tomato sauce in America is just it's dead wrong. But before I talk the subject to death, let's just make this, shall we? Right, so before I begin, I just wanna say that this is one of the greatest cookbooks to ever exist. And I'll be using some of the techniques that she describes in this video, so if you wanna take a look at it, there's a link in my description. Anyway, let's talk about the most important ingredient here, the humble tomato. Now that it's tomato season, using fresh is pretty ideal. You wanna have some sort of variety of plum tomato, more specifically, Roma tomatoes which is what I'm using here. And this is important, guys. So when picking these out, make sure that you're getting nice vine ripened Roma tomatoes, some really, really good quality ones, the best you can get your hands on. And of course, if you can't get your hands on good quality fresh Roma tomatoes, then you can absolutely use canned, whole peeled San Marzano tomatoes, but that's sort of a last resort kind of thing. Take four and a half pounds or 1.8 kilos of fresh Roma tomatoes and lightly score across at the bottom of each of them. This helps with the peeling. Then you're gonna plunge the tomatoes into boiling water for about a minute or slightly less until their skins sort of pop a little and loosen up. Then immediately transfer them to an ice water bath do this in batches if needed. You're just blanching these, not cooking them. Once they're all iced, immediately peel off their skins. They should slide right off real easy-like. Make sure not to leave them in their ice bath for too long. You know, you're just using it to stop the cooking process. You know, don't let them get all freezy in there and stuff. That's... Once all your tomatoes are peeled, cut them roughly into one-inch cubes and place that in a nice, medium, large-ish pot. I'm using my enameled pot that you guys always make fun of for being so messed up because it's old, but look, don't make fun of old Bessie, okay? She's given it all she's got. So once your tomatoes are peeled and cut, place that pot over medium heat, season it with salt, and gently simmer these tomatoes for 35 minutes. Now, always season right at the start with this because you want to get those little tomatoes to release their juicy juices, you know what I'm saying? During this simmering period, you'll need to stir periodically and adjust the temperature, you know, up or down, keeping it a nice, gentle simmer rather than a ferocious boil. You know, you don't want them to be boiling and yeah, you get the point. Also, while simmering, you're going to smush the tomato chunks up against the side of the pot just sort of help mash them up as they cook. The more you smush, the smoother the sauce. Now, we're not blending this. Keep it rustic. You know, we want some texture variants. Now, once that 35 minute simmer is up, you can do one of two things. You can go ahead and stir in really well a half cup or a 125 milliliters of nice extra virgin olive oil and simmer it an additional 15 minutes then taste it again for seasoning with salt and call it a day and have an absolutely delicious tomato sauce or you could take it a step further like i did and replace that half cup of olive oil by finely dicing two and a half ounces or 75 grams of guanciale and cook that in a third a cup of extra virgin olive oil with two sprigs of rosemary and one, yes, only one, clove of garlic left whole and lightly crushed. Brown that stuff over medium heat just until the guanciale is lightly browned. Don't let the olive oil stay in the heat for longer than about two to three minutes. Then just add all that stuff straight to your tomato sauce in place of that original half cup of olive oil. Stir it in really, really well. Simmer it an additional 15 minutes and then taste again for its salt level, season it again if necessary, and then toss with your pasta of choice. I used bucatini, but you can go with whatever your heart desires. And ideally, your heart desires B-roll. And that is it. So how to make classic, traditional-ish tomato sauce with fresh tomatoes. It's that simple. And more people should be doing it. It's cheaper. 
and it tastes about a bajillion times better than just about anywhere else you're gonna get it. Anyway, before we go, just a quick little conversation about Fermentation Friday. Let's just say I didn't post it last Friday. I feel awful about it, but um, today is Friday, isn't it? Oh, it's Saturday. Good job, Josh. Point is, so Fermentation Friday is kind of a little bit on hold. The biggest issue with Fermentation Friday is purely timing, you know? Uh, it's not an excuse. Anyway, I just want to give you guys an update on it. You know, it's coming, but let's just say that I've got some really cool fermentation projects in the pipeline. It's things that you guys have been asking for. But in the meantime, I appreciate your patience and there is still plenty more. If you have ideas for what kind of ferments you wanna see, just send them off, comment below, let me know. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.